All right, well, hello, AP Physics students, and welcome to this cold day edition of a physics video lecture. Uh, we haven't done a video lecture for a while, but uh, this is going to be a relatively brief one that's going to be going through just a brief introduction for our final topic or concept from, from this unit, which is going to be power. Now, the, the term power, I'm sure we've all heard a bunch, and you know, if you watch sports, you might hear a, an announcer say, oh, wow, like a uh, guy's really powerful, or um, someone might talk about a car as being very powerful. Well, the way they're using it is actually pretty correct, but I want us to understand more fully, physics-wise, what that actually means. So power, we say, is the rate at which work is done. Okay, so remember, if we see that term rate, we know that something is happening in a certain amount of time. Now, another thing to remember is that within this unit so far, we've said that work is just a change in energy. So another way we can think about power is it's the rate at which energy actually changes. And, you know, that energy change could be a, it could be a transformation into another type of energy or it could be a transfer of energy from one object to another. You know, so for example, a, a spring transferring its elastic potential energy to, uh, to some object that's pushed up against it, okay? So overall, power, rate at which work is done, rate at which energy can change. Now, there's a couple different ways we can look at power. Um, the first one, we could say, we want to talk about average power. Another way that I like to think about average power is um, it's, it's power at a constant rate. Okay, so it's power at a constant rate. So when we think about average power, it's just like any, any sort of average. It's um, the total of something over something. So uh, the first kind of mathematical definition we can have here is we can say power is equal to some total quantity of work divided by some time interval, okay? Now, we can extend this out, and we again, as we've said, we, we know that work is um, equal to a change in energy, so we could say that uh, power is equal to a change in energy, okay, some value for change in energy over some uh, total time interval, all right, so average power, again, we can think about it as it's power at a constant rate. It's never changing. But now on the flip side, just like, just like when we were thinking about average velocity versus instantaneous velocity, you know, average velocity was displacement over some total time interval, and instantaneous velocity has the... Uh, you know, there could be a lot of change there. So we can actually think about power the same way. So we can also look at instantaneous instantaneous power. So again, this would be, um, we could think about this as work done, perhaps in a changing rate. So what we can say here is that if we're looking at instantaneous power, we want to look at one minute, minuscule moment in time. So power in this case would be equal to the derivative of work with respect to time. Now again, if we extend that out, we could say that power is the derivative of energy with respect to time. So... You know, just to make this a little bit more clear as to what we're actually talking about here, I'm going to kind of extend this out. I'm going to say, okay, well, we know power is the derivative with respect to time of work. But now, what is work? Well, work is, work is force times delta x, okay? Now, in this unit so far we've dealt with forces that could uh, vary as a function of x, right? We've done integrals where we said the integral of 
uh, a variable force with respect to x uh, is actually work. But in terms of time, we're never going to deal with a force that varies uh, as a function of time. So if we're taking the, the derivative of work with respect to time, what we're really doing is we're taking the derivative of position here. We're taking the derivative of displacement. So again, we'll simplify this out and we'll say, okay, well, power then is going to be force times dx dt. And what does that give us? It gives us that force uh, times displacement, or times the derivative of displacement um, which is velocity equals power. Now, I wrote this as uh, velocity as a time function because, remember, what we can do here now is we can say, okay, I could ask you, hey, uh, I want to know the instantaneous power that's exerted at time is equal to three seconds. If you knew a, a position function here and you did this derivative, you could then find what that power exerted at three seconds was, okay? We can even narrow it down here, and I could say, okay, uh, you have a time interval from six to four seconds. What is the power exerted in that, in, in that time frame? Well, again, you can use this formula to do that. So, uh, again, brief video lecture. The main ideas here is I that I want us to take away um, are these two main equations. So understanding the difference between average power and instantaneous power. And I'm actually going to rewrite this for you here. So instantaneous power. So average power, we're looking at some uh, total amount of work done and some total amount of time interval. Again, we can think about that as uh, uh, work done at a constant rate. Now instantaneous power, Again, we're looking at work done at potentially a changing rate. And that changing rate is based upon some position function that we can actually take the derivative of, and we're comfortable with that. We did that in our first unit this year. And we then understand that power is actually equal to force times some velocity function that we get by taking the derivative of position. So with all this being said, um, again, this is just a brief intro into power. Uh, we're going to be applying this stuff uh, early on next week. Uh, please remember to work through your uh, homework set number two to prepare for our quiz on Friday. Um, and as always, AP Physics students, take care, and we'll see you soon.